This is not an alien invasion. These are actually millions of insects known as mayflies. And although this annoying insect is only around for a few weeks each year, their impact to the fishery of the Great Lakes region is enormous. In this video, I'm going to talk a bit about the mayfly, their life cycle, and their important role in the phenomenal fishery of the Great Lakes. There are over 3,000 known species of mayflies worldwide, belonging to the order Ephemeroptera. These species vary in size, color, habitat preference, and lifestyle characteristics. Mayflies are found on every continent except Antarctica, and they inhabit a wide range of freshwater environments, including lakes, rivers, streams, and ponds. But in the Great Lakes region, there is one species of mayfly that dominates. Hexagenia limbata, also known as the giant burrowing mayfly, is a species of mayfly that lives throughout most of North America. And it's the species that we typically see near the Great Lakes shorelines in late May, June, and early July. Now let's take a quick look at the mayfly life cycle. We'll start with the form of the mayfly that we typically see when they first appear in the spring, known as a sub-imago, commonly known as a dun. The dun has wings, but is not yet fully mature. It rests on the surface of the water or nearby vegetation while its wings dry and harden. After its wings have dried and hardened, the sub-imago flies to a nearby area, usually vegetation or land, where it completes its transformation into the fully mature adult known as the imago or spinner. The adult mayfly typically has clear wings and a slender body. Its primary goal as an adult is to reproduce. Adult mayflies typically live only for a short period, ranging from a few hours to a few days, depending on the species. During this time, they mate, lay eggs, and then die. Mayflies lay their eggs in bodies of fresh water such as lakes, rivers, or streams. The eggs are usually deposited on the surface of the water or on nearby vegetation. The time it takes for eggs to hatch varies depending on species and environmental conditions, but it ranges from just a few seconds to several weeks. Once hatched, the mayfly larvae, known as nymphs, live underwater. They undergo several molts as they grow, typically feeding on algae and other organic matter found in the water. Mayfly nymphs can be found burrowing in sediment, clinging to rocks, or hiding among aquatic plants. This stage can last from a few months to several years, again depending on species and environmental factors. Mayfly nymphs are often sold as bait in many Midwest bait shops, where they are commonly known as wigglers. They can be a very productive bait when used for the right species at the right time of year. Once the nymph is ready to emerge from the water and transform into an adult, it swims to the water's surface or crawls onto emergent vegetation, where it transforms again into a subimago, completing the cycle. While individual mayflies are harmless, their emergence in large swarms can have some negative impacts on commercial and industrial facilities that are located along Great Lakes shorelines. This includes large cleanup costs, safety concerns, and even power outages. However, when it comes to their impacts on the Great Lakes ecosystem, mayflies are overwhelmingly positive. Mayflies provide an enormous food source for fish of all sizes due to their small size, high volume, and easy pickings. As nymphs, their constant motion disturbing the lake bottom tends to cycle nutrients in the lower part of the water column. Finally, mayflies are a great indicator of lake health as they are particularly sensitive to water pollution. In fact, their overall increase in numbers since the early 1990s is a positive indicator of just how much the lakes have changed the last few decades. But despite this rebound, in recent years, mayfly numbers have again begun to fall. While there are several theories about what might be causing this, scientists do not yet have the answers. So to summarize, mayflies are an enormous benefit to anglers everywhere, but especially in the Great Lakes region. So while the appearance of this little bug may be annoying, 
Just remember that it is one of the key components to the great fishery we have here in the Great Lakes.